may grow up. Grow up to be what? Which is the head. What? Christ. Grow up to be what? Christ. Why? Because it's what? That Christ, the anointing, is where? In you. Well, it was in Jesus. That's right. Now it's in you. All the words it means is anointing with the presence of God. You understand? You don't realize what you got. And if you don't know what you got, then it's easy to be taken from you. No more children. What? Grow up. How do you grow up? Speaking the truth in agape. Not having agape. You, you can't. You've got to speak. Now, Romans 8, 28, 29. Ready? And we know, all right? And we know that all things work together for good. What's good? God's will come to pass. Yes or no? All right. And we know that all things work together to good. To who? To who? To everybody. No, that's not true. All things work together for good to them that what? Agape God. No agape, things don't turn out so good. Got it? No agape, no good. And we know that all things work together for good, bringing the past God's will, for them that agape God. No agape God, things don't turn out so good. To them who are called according to his purpose. No, that's not the fish. It's purpose, right? Purpose. How many here to bring to pass God's power and authority in the world? Yes or no? Raise your hand if you're here to do what Jesus did in greater, kind of like hint, hint. You can raise your hand too. It's okay. Isn't that cool? You can do the works that Jesus did and what? Then why aren't you doing it? Well, I don't want to offend anybody. You got to spend a day with me when I go out in town. I just offend everybody. Especially them in a, I love being in an elevator because they got no place to go. Hey, aren't you glad you're in the elevator with me? I put myself in some really interesting situations because if you don't, how are you going to know that God's there? Push the line. I do. All the time. For whom he did foreknow. Did God foreknow you? Yeah. What about the people that don't know God? Nope. God don't know him. He also did predestinate us to be conformed to the image of his son. Why? That he, Jesus, might be the firstborn among what? Do you understand what this is saying about you? I mean, is it even like waking? Is there lights coming off? Right? Or everything just went dark? This is like really important. Well, how many children does God have? Jesus was the firstborn. What does that mean? There are others. Yes. For whom he foreknow, he also did predestine to be conformed to the image of his son. God seeing you, not as you are now, but becoming just like the first one. That he, Jesus, might be the firstborn among how many? Many. Many. Does that include him? Does that include you? 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 Her? Her? What was it like the first time you got Revelation? Whoa, right? I was like, whoa, how do I do that again? <laughs> it's real easy. Agape. Clear out your thoughts, your images, priorities. Think from God's perspective, act with that reality. That's how you do it. Now all of a sudden God talks to you. It's like, wow. You get everything. God already knows what you have needed before you what? Before you ask. It's not a game. Ask Peter. I read it to you, what he said. No joke. All right? Jesus was the firstborn. Who are the others? We are. All right. Thank you. We're getting there. Firstborn among many brethren. One. All right, now, as, a, as an example, when we come to the word, we see that Jesus teaches, and then he gives an example. Then Jesus teaches, and he gives an example. And you see that all the way through the Bible. There's the teaching, and then there's the example, right? 
Well, I've given you the teaching. Now I need to give you a example. example right. And there, no, <laughs> it's not us. <laughs> now, this is what I understand. I told you, but when you mix God with us, how much of God is the different person we become? The more we mix with God, the greater we become in every category. Does that make sense? So you're going to be something greater than what you've been. How many have already recognized that even other people around you are recognizing you're not the same person? Anyone here have that situation? And we got promoted, and everyone got recognized, and everyone, yeah, it's like you it can't help it because the more the word you have, the more it, you become different. You're still, a, you're still the same person. You just gain more understanding and wisdom. All of a sudden, it's like you've been living in a darkness, and all of a sudden you get light, and you're like, whoa, you got to see everything. That's pretty intense. So I'm very proud of you all, very thankful. But anyway, I don't want to see this. I'm not just sitting there so I can, you know, beat the word, beat the wind with my mouth. But um, I want you to, to have this really works. I know it works because I've done it. There's no limit to what you can do. But you've got to do it whose way? Not yours, not what society says. It will not work. But my culture says it doesn't matter what your culture says. What does the word say? Got me. Now, when we go through history, like, was that a godly country? Was that a godly leader? Was that, how do you know? You know their heart? Now, cultures, some cultures are more godlier than others. There was a time where Egypt was extremely godly, and then it wasn't. There was a time when Persia was really godly, and then it wasn't. You see what I'm saying? There was a time the United States was godly, and it became not. So who's who? Unless you know the heart, you really can't say. But understand, people write history who have conquered, who overwhelmed, who dominated. They write history, not the other people. So you're always looking at history through someone else's opinion. It takes a lot of research and a lot of work to figure out what really happened. Like, for instance, you live in Japan, it tells a different story of what happened in World War II than what we tell. Whole different story. So you've got to see both sides and then kind of work out where the middle is to get the whole story. Does that make sense? When someone walks up, do you know what that person did to me? Let me go over and talk to that person. No, don't talk to him. Like, okay, we got to see both what? Does that make sense? People don't want me to talk. Don't, don't talk to them. So anyway, <laughs> people are strange. Anyway, that's just the way they are. Okay, so we're, what's our subject matter? Juan. Yes, Juan. Juan, right? Juan. <laughs> Juan. <laughs> All right. Does anyone know what this is? Frank, it's just a picture. Okay, no. Back in, um, I, I think it's Afghanistan, there was a place where a royal palace was at. And one of the um, rulers of that, of the palace, what would happen is that the, um, like Darius, this is about the time of Darius, would come down and he would judge in that territory. He'd go to each one of the different territories. He spent the whole year going to each place and hearing the problems and overseeing it. Now, I want you to look at this. So if I said, who is he? Well, he's obviously the military. Since he's the ruler, that's the, the head of the military. Who's this guy? Who's that guy? Well, this is the first people to ever believe in a one God. Before, where everybody else had many gods, this is the people, and it came from Persia, where they believed in one God. Does anybody know the name of that? All right. How many have ever heard of the people that came to see Jesus when he was born? The Magi. The Magi. Where'd the Magi come from? Persia. Who trained them? The Magi were from the Medes, the same ones who trained Moses. That's why when Moses' father-in-law came to visit, all of Israel got and bowed to him because he's the one that trained Moses. So when we're talking about the truth of God's word as being one, that's from Persia, and this is the person who speaks. You see, he is the prophet. He spends, he spends his time working the truth. So now that is the Persian king. Who's this guy? Who's that guy? All right. Notice it's the same crown. No, it's the same 
clothes. Is that the prince? He's a Nazir, a one who is extremely knowledgeable of God, extremely knowledgeable in mathematics, sciences, everything. He is a, a experienced, he's the highest level of a Magi. He is called uh, a Nazir. They're trained. Every one of the Egyptians had one, Persians had one. Everybody wanted to have a Nazir that was trained by the Midianites. Got it? Like Moses was trained by them. And someone else was, which I'm about to teach you. So when we look at this, there's the king. There's his what? Azir. That's the Hebrew word for Azir. Now, Eve was called helpmeet. God will make you an Azir, God says. That's what this is supposed to be. The second in what? Second in charge. The second in command. Now, in Arabic, it's wazir. And in Persian, it's vazir. So if you want to do some research on it, you're perfectly welcome to. I got books, so you can go on the internet. But you're not going to find this. Because that all, when, when uh, 70 AD happened, everything was wiped out. All the material was taken. And it didn't surface again until the King James came out. So hardly anyone knows about this. But... Some people still do. They understand what it is. But I'm going to show it to you. You ready? Okay. So in Genesis 37, 3. Now Israel, that's Jacob, right? That's God changed his name to Israel. That's where you get the nation from. His sons became each one of the tribes. And there's the word loved. Now that word loved is kind of weird because it makes you seem like Jacob loved Joseph more than all his children. That's not true. That's not true. The word loved is the word ahab. That's the ah sound. Hab, and that's the, the beth sound. Ahab. There it is. Ahab. It, it's the word equivalent to the word agape. So what happened was that Jacob was training his children, but they did, it didn't take except for one. Who was it? Joseph. And it says, because he was the son of his old age. No, no, no. That word old age, all it means, the son of his wisdom. The son of his wisdom. Because it's supposed to be, as you get older, you're supposed to be wiser. How many are older than you were 10 years ago? Okay, some of you are still the same age. Okay, cool. Does anybody hear what I'm saying? <laughs> all right. Does anyone, are you wiser than you were 10 years ago? Yes, all right? So as you get older, older, you're supposed to get wiser. So it just means his old age, no. It means it's, 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 it's a figure of speech in that culture, which means son of his wisdom. That's all it means. Not his, oh, it's the son of his old. That's what? That's, what? He imparted to his son knowledge and what? Wisdom. And gave him as much as he could. He gave it to all his children, but it didn't take except for Joseph. Now, in Job 12.12, 12, it says, with the ancient, that means the elder, older, is what? Wisdom. And in links of days, what? Understanding. Links of days means in length that what you stretch, what you accomplish, what you do, you get understanding. So wisdom applied is, gives you understanding. All right, now another word is just word colors. He made him a coat of many colors. Isn't that cute? How many colors was it? How many colors? What does it say in Spanish? Does it say many colors? Well, it's, I got to tell you a secret. When this was first translated, they had no idea what it meant. So they thought it meant colors, and it doesn't. How many would like to know what it really means? All right. How many here remember David? All right, you're not that old, huh? Okay. When David went to, to um, Ziglag, right? When he went, he left Ziglag and he came back. They took his wife and his children and, and, and took him away, right? And they burned the city down. And everybody was going to kill David. And David was like, ah, what did he do? 
He forgot to, before he did something, he forgot to ask who. He just went and did it without thinking about the consequences of asking God. So he just did it, and when he come back, his wife, his children, wives and children, and the men's wives and children were all taken into slavery, and the city was burnt. So he felt like crap. Oh, man. So what he did is he took off his clothes and he put on a linen what? Ephod, it's called, right? And that linen ephod stretches all the way down to your palms and all the way to your feet. It's a lengthened cloth. So this coat is, means just the ephod. It's a full, all one piece that he wore. And that's what he did. What was his job? He was taking the place of his father. When you go before God and you carry out the will of God and you're doing things for God and not for men, then you carry yourself different. You, you dress different. In that culture, you dress differently. You dress in a, and then one piece goes all the way down to the, right to your palms and all the way down to your feet. The word colors is the word pach, right? Pach. That's all it means. And pach means palms and souls. And they were like, what? So how do you translate that colors? It, you, you go in the lexicon, it says, you look under pocket, it comes up and says, it's, it, the, the singular is palm or souls. And that's in the plural. Therefore, it's referring to a coat of many colors. Like, what? <laughs> where is this logic from? Right? So what it means, if you look at every other place and where that occurs, where that situation occurs to going before God, it's that same thing. It's a co a, a, an outer garment that goes right to your palms and right to the bottom of your feet, covering it. Got it? Has nothing to do with colors. So it's a one piece. And you see David doing that. He asked for the linen what? Ephod. And he, and he put that on before he went to God. So whenever you would go into the temple, you would have to put on a linen ephod, which is the same thing. It goes right to your palms and to the bottom of your feet. It covers your whole body. All right. So, and when his brethren saw that their father ahabbed him. Now, wait a minute. Did he train his sons? Yes. Did he train Joseph? Yes. Well, how come Joseph is now taking his father's place and going before God? You understand? You would think Jacob would be getting revelation. He's got no revelation. Because he turned it over to his what? His son. The other sons didn't get revelation. They don't get anything because they're not doing anything for God. They're not learning. They're not, they're not doing anything. So what happened with Joseph is that he became, he did everything his father was supposed to do. He did all the accounting. He took care. He, wanted, he kept track of all the sheep, all the herds, everything. And even his own brothers, what they were doing, everything. He kept track of everything. And he had to go to God every day and every week to check with God to make sure God was happy. You understand? So how many times do you go to God? You see, see can you imagine the same thing as brothers? Like, I don't want to go to God. You got to understand. Well, that's not how he was. He was out there every day, committed, focused. So when his brethren saw that their father ahabbed him, which is agape, more than all his brethren, they hated him. They hated him. Why? They're jealous. Because he knows the same thing they do, but he's getting all the benefits. He gets the recognition. He gets the, the, the authority. He gets the, I mean, he has, he's in charge of everything. He has more, his father doesn't even know what he has. Everything is placed in Joseph's hands. Well, how does Joseph look at this? Joseph looks at it as if this is my responsibility to who? Yeah. To God. Not his father, not his brothers, but to who? God. And he took it seriously. Absolutely seriously. He didn't mess around. So, because of his commitment, his, his service to God, his, his total heart, soul, mind to God, guess what happens? He dreams of what? Now, that word dreams a dream is like really a weird statement. Today, I dreamed a dream. Like, I dreamed a dream? What he's talking about is revelation. You get a what? Image. When you got something on your heart and your soul and you're lifting it to God, then all of a sudden, bang, it happens. You get, you, everything disappears and you get this really sharp image 
and and that's it's like a movie, and you're the you're the only one in the theater watching it. Does that make sense? And it's hard to explain, but imagine being in a theater, and there's a big movie screen, and you're watching something. That's what it's like. Everything disappears. Got it? Now that's going to happen to you. You'll be you'll be doing something, and all of a sudden you'll be lifting it to God, and you're just keeping your mind focused on God, and all of a sudden, bang, you're watching a movie. All right, and all of a sudden it's over, and like, well, that was weird. What was that about? You know, and you, and you go to God, and God shares it with you. Like when Peter was on the rooftop, right? And all of a sudden, there was this sheet let down with all manner of beasts in it. You all read that in, in Acts? You all read that? Okay. And, and God says, rise, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter goes, not so, Lord. I'm not going to get anything un, you know, unclean. And God says, if I sanctify that, you'd better not call it unclean. Right? And that happened three times. He goes, now what was that all about? Right? Well, that's where revelation comes in. It's like being the only person in a movie theater, and that's all you see, and then, and then it's gone. And all of a sudden you look around like, that was weird, right? right? And it's really cool. Now, I don't know a lot of people get it all the time, but when you focus on God, then there's going to be a time when God's going to need you or want you to know something, and he's going to give it to you. Got it? I'm teaching you about how to receive what? Revelation. Notice I've been doing that for the past three weeks. Where's I you receive revelation? I'm teaching you. All right. Here's this dream I, which I have dreamt. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright, and behold, your sheaf stood around about and made obstinates to mine. They all bowed to it. What does that mean? What does that mean? Do the brothers know how to understand Revelation? Yeah. Do they know what it means? Yeah. They all were taught what? Revel how to receive Revelation. But only one is doing what he's supposed to do. And today, I'm seeing that everybody wants to talk about it, but no one wants to do it. They all want to talk about receiving Revelation, but nobody's doing it. Why? Because they won't open their mouths. They won't do the word. Because they just, well, if I need to, I'll go there. No, 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 no. If you're out of practice when you need to, you won't be able to. And his brethren said, Shall, this is what it means. They know exactly what it means. Do you? Shall thou indeed reign over us? That's what it means. Now you know when you see that in the Bible, what that means. Is there any other place where that's used? Yes. It just gave you the definition. The Bible interprets what? Itself. Or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet more for his dreams and for his words. So now he knows that his, his brothers are all going to be under him and bowing to him. He knows that's going to happen. And nothing can what? Stop it. As long as he stays on the what? On the word. And he dreamed yet another dream. How many times God makes sure that it's true and that it's going to happen because he gives it how many times? Twice. If you get it twice, it's absolute. You don't tell anyone unless God gives you permission to tell someone. Got it? If God doesn't tell you to tell anyone and you go and tell someone, I got revelation which is what happened here. He thought he could run and tell his brothers. Bad idea. He didn't ask God, did he? How many have gotten inspiration? God saw something and then it came to pass. Anyone have had that happen? How many saw something and then you told everybody about it and everybody did their best to make sure it didn't happen? And he dreamed yet another dream and told it to his brethren and saying, behold, I have dreamed a dream more and behold, the sun and the moon and the 11 stars made obstinates to me. Now, what does that mean? The sun and moon is defined here. Behold, okay. And he told it to his what? 
father. Now, his father should be, his father taught him how to, to interpret dreams. His father taught him how to walk with God. But the father turned all his responsibility over to Joseph. And to his brethren. And his father rebuked him. Pow! He didn't hit him. I'm mean, just saying he, he shut him down. <laughs> and said unto him, what is this dream that thou hast dreamed? What's this vision you, you've got? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee? To the, well, he taught him. Didn't he teach him? Didn't he teach his brothers? Everybody knows what it means, but no one's getting revelation because nobody is being a steward. No, everybody's working for themselves. They're not working for who? For God. They're not doing anything for God. If you have someone walks up on your payday, you have a business, they walk up on a payday, and they say, oh, I'm here to get paid. And you go, who are you? Oh, I'm here to get paid. Is there a problem? What's the problem? I don't know who you are. <laughs> hey, you understand the problem? Everybody's going to God, we're expecting a payday, and they haven't done anything. That's not how God works. I'm here to get paid. Who the heck are you? You're not even on the payroll. You see the problem? Now, it's true that Zeus and Apollo and all that crap, but that's not the God we're worshiping. That's not the God we know. It's not the God of the Bible. Keep your God straight. Don't confuse him. Don't go following the Greek and Roman crap. It doesn't work. There is no Jupiter. There is no Apollo. No Aphrodite. Stuff's not real. Quit thinking it is. Also, there's no Santa Claus. I know that's hard to believe, but there's no Santa Claus either. What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and my mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brethren, what? Envied him. Not hated, what? Envied. Who's getting revelation? And they're all older. His father taught them all how to walk by revelation. But who's doing it? He taught them all how to work and walk with God. And who's doing it? Only what? Juan. Right? Joseph. There's only one walking with God. Who is it? Joseph. Because you put it in his hands, he makes sure it's blessed by God. He will do, he'll go to God to make sure that everything is absolutely perfect. Isn't that cool? When you go to work, do you sit there and go with God and say, okay, God, how can I do a better job here? How can I make this better? Or you're saying, ah, right, another day at work. One of these days they'll promote me. <laughs> Don't do that. Look at it differently. Allow God to work. God will show you stuff that no one else can see. How do I know? Because I've experienced it. I know what works. And I know what doesn't. And his brethren, what? Envy them. They're older. They thought they were smarter, but they'd never done it. And the only one getting revelation is him and not them. Now, the real solution to this is, if you want to make sure that they, you get revelation and he's getting it, get rid of him. Now God will talk directly to you. Kind of force the issue, right? Like Cain did with Abel. God talked directly to Abel and Cain got pissed, so he killed his brother. Now God's got to talk to me, and God did. Oh, did God talk to him? Oh. Does everybody understand this? Am I teaching you something of importance and value? Okay. So during the dream means he received a vision. And binding sheaves in the field, my sheaf st stood and upright, and behold, your sheaf stood around and absence. Did this happen later on? Yes. The sun and the moon, did his mom and dad show up? bow down to him? Yes. But you know what's interesting is he never let go of that image. He never let go of that vision. He constantly held it and would not let it go. That's what God showed him and God declared it so it's going to happen 
and nothing can stop it. You just have to stay focused and ready to receive it. Isn't that cool? So when God gives you revelation, you don't let anybody, anything, or any situation take it from you. Do you understand? Yes. No matter what the situation, it'll still come to pass. Don't budge. Ephesians 4.15. But speak the truth in agape. May what? Grow. You got to grow, and that's how you learn. Did he make a mistake telling his brothers and his father? Yes, but he had to learn, and he learned. You got you to make mistakes to learn. Romans 8, 27, and we know that all things, what things, good and bad, no matter what, work together for good. What's good? Bringing the past God's what? Will. Remember, there's none good but one, God. To them that agape God, to them who are what? Called according to whose purpose? God's purpose. And with God, God's going to protect you. God's going to guard you, provide for you everything, providing you do your part. Does that make sense? All right, Genesis 39, 1 through 6. And Joseph was brought down to what? Egypt. What happened? He, his, his brother said, we're going to fix him and we're not going to bow down to him. We're going to kill him. And they put him in a pit to kill him. And the other brother sold him and goes, hey, this is a better idea. Let's go give him to the Ishmaelites. And sold him as a slave and got 40 pieces of silver. Hot dog. Now they can go spend their money, right? But anyway, what happened was that there was Midianites there on that caravan. Remember I told you about Midianites? Yeah. They're the ones that trained Moses. They're the ones that, that of their disciples, one came to see Jesus. Those are the Magi. That was the Midians. And they were there. So where do you think they, when they found Joseph, would they think like, whoa. Because you know, where they're at and where they're going is Egypt. That's going to take three months to get there. Because they're traveling at what kind of speed? One and a half miles an hour. Downhill, maybe four. <laughs> you understand? This is, this is wagon train time, right? Everybody's got horses. No, they don't get in their Tesla and make it over there really quick, right? And Pharaoh was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of the Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites. The Medians teach, but they don't deal with business. So the, Medi the Ishmaelites do, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was what? The Lord was what? Joseph. Where is he? I don't see him. You're not going to see him. You're not going to see God. No man has seen God what? At any time. So what's the deal? You, God only is around you as long as you hold who? God. God's not leaving you unless you throw him out. You've got some greater priority? Good luck. Happy trails. The Lord was with Joseph. Joseph never let go of who? God. He never let go of God. And God was always what? With him. And what was the results of that? And he was a what? Prosperous man. Wait, wait, wait a minute. He's a slave. How can a slave be prosperous? Hello, anybody home? All right. How does a slave become prosperous? If you're a slave, what do you own? All right, so what do you work for? You work for food? No, understand, you and I have a job, right? We have a business or we have something, right? And we work very hard to get what? Money, right? And what do you do with the money? Give it to the wife. Give it to the wife, right? You don't have to. She just takes it before you even get it. Right. Well, so what's the purpose of money? To buy what? Things, clothing, right? Food, right? Pay the pace to stay. Yes? 
Why? Now, if you're a slave, who pays for your, who takes care of you? Your master. Does he provide your clothes? Provide your food? Provide everything you need? Yes. You don't have to have worry about anything except doing what you are supposed to do. And the military, I signed up for four years, right? Right? Signed up, military, hot dog, went to boot camp, came out, went, sent me to the flagship of the Seventh Fleet. Now, what's cool? What did I, what did I have to do for clothes? You have to worry about it. They gave it to me. Here you go. Who fed me? They did. All I had to do was do my job. That's all you have to do for God. Just do your job. God handles everything what else. And he was a prosperous man. So what do you, how do you know someone's prosperous? Well, because they get money and they buy these things. What if it's bought for you? You understand the richest man, you hear know, a, a, a Warren Buffett? Do you know how much he owns? Richest man in the world, what does he own? Nothing. Bill Gates, what does he own? Nothing. Can't get taxed on nothing. We're going to get taxed, so you're going to get, you have, you have the absolute minimum wage. That's all they make. What do they do? They turn everything over to the corporation, and then they get a paycheck. They don't have any money. They're totally dedicated to their business. That's it. So all the richest men in the world can't be taxed. You see, this, the, even, even in the present, he doesn't get he, he, the whole time he's been president, he's never received a paycheck. He don't want it, he gives it away. He is worth what, six billion dollars? What does he do with his money? What's his income? Taxes worth seven hundred dollars, period. Why? He doesn't have any money. The corporation owns it all. He's dedicated, he's an employee of the corporation. It's his corporation, but he's an employee of it. Got it? You don't have to own anything. How much does God own? Everything. Can he bring things to you that you never even thought of? Because God does know your heart more than you do. And when you wake up in the morning, like, how'd this get here? Where'd this come from? I got a lot of that stuff. Like, all right, now how did that happen? <laughs> Comes out of the blue. You got to experience it. You really got to experience it. And the Lord was with Joseph, because Joseph never let go of God. And he, Joseph, was a prosperous man. Well, you see him, he's like, this guy's got excellent clothes, he's got everything, so, wow, he's not missing anything. And he was in the house of his master, what? The Egyptian gave him everything that he had. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. So if somebody puts something in your hand, does it prosper? Does it increase? It should. Everything in your hand should. God will give you guidance and direction what to do with it. And it came to pass from that time that he had made him an overseer in his house and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for what? I'm sorry, the, I, can you can read that? The Lord blessed the Egyptian's what? Well, does that mean the Egyptian was godly? Uh, no, it was because of what? Joseph's sake. Well, God's going to, uh, you, you can't grab God and pull him along. Right? You're either going to do his word or it's not. Remember when Israel decided well, they were going to fight the Philistines? Did they check with God? Nope, but they're going to fight the Philistines anyway. So they went out there to fight the Philistines, got their asses kicked. They all can go, oh, they're coming all back. Well, I know, we'll grab the ark and take it out there. <laughs> what happened then? Didn't work, did it? God didn't say, number one, engage war with the Philistines. Number two, he said, don't, he didn't say take the ark. So what happened to the ark? Got captured. Now, of course, that was a bad day from that day on for them. But nonetheless, you need to do what God what? How many have done a dumb shit in the last month? A really dumb shit. And it was because God told you to or you made the decision on your own? So 
seemed right. And the blessings of the Lord was upon all he had in the house and in the field. Now, it's real cool when you're driving a car and God tells you, oh, by the way, your lug nut's coming off. Like, okay. So you pull over and you look. Good. It is coming off. You can tighten it up. How did you know? It just, God showed me. You know, brag on, God, talk to me. I'm like, oh, really? Okay. You don't need to tell anybody. You just walk with God. I don't tell everybody what goes on. Not in anybody's business between me and God. Got it? Now, God says it's okay to tell us another story. It's a whole different ball of wax. But if you tell people, they have a tendency to magnify you. Ooh, you don't want that. Yeah. They want, and all of a sudden, everybody's going to grow a beard and they'll pull a pipe. And they'll have, oh, come on. <laughs> right, you understand? You are going to be your own man and woman of God. Got it? You don't have to grow a beard and smoke a pipe, especially you, okay? Don't need to do that. All you need to do is be your type, your type with God. And it came to pass from that time forward, he made him oversee over all that he had, that the Lord bless the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. Not for the Egyptian's sake, but for Joseph's sake. So if you start looking at it from God's perspective and treating the job as if it would belong to God, watch what happens to your business. It will expand as God brings things to it, increases it. Don't look at it as a job. Look at God, put it in your responsibility, and you're working for who? And he left, and he left all that he had in what? Joseph's hands. What did he just do? Gave it to Joseph. You got it all. That's the one thing when you do things for God is that you have people go, the bosses haven't been able to take a break in a long time. They never get a vacation. And if you can do what they can do and better, I'm going on vacation. You've got it. And here's your raise. <laughs> and now they go. People who have businesses and stuff, they never go on vacation. After everybody goes home, they still work. You, you treat it like it was working for God, then watch what God does. You're going to wind up running the business, just like Joseph did. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hands. And he knew not. Now, he didn't sit there and walk around with it in his hands. It just means whatever he did. Everything that was done was done by who? Joseph. Hands mean what? Actions, right? Feet mean what? Thoughts. Why right? didn't put it all in his hand? He'd walk around with this hole to carry. Him. <laughs> and he knew not aught that he had. He didn't even know what he had. Who's the only one who knew what, 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 what there was? Joseph. He was the only one who knew. Save the bread he did eat. And Joseph was a, what does goodly mean? What does good mean? That's right. He always checked with who? God. He always went to God. He kept his room clean, keeping his thoughts, his images, his priorities of God as his focal point, who he was in relation to God, and everything was for God. And you see that when you read it. By the way, read this account and see if you can capture his heart. Every time that he was going to do something wrong or someone wanted to get him to do something wrong, he goes, I'm not going to offend God. Offend God? Because he looked at his job as working for who? God. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. That word favored is dealing with Kadi's identity. He knew that he was God's Azir on earth. And God's now training him, is he not? First start, he started off being an Azir of his father and his family. Now he's an Azir of who? Potiphar. Pretty cool, huh? He's constantly being promoted. But then something bad happened. Don't you hate when something bad happens? What happened the first time? 
His brothers tried to what? Kill him. Because he didn't ask God, should I tell him? He automatically thought he should tell him. They almost killed him, right? But then what happened? They sold him into slavery, wound up in Potiphar, and then out comes Potiphar War and goes, what? Lie with me, because she likes to lie. No, I'm just not. Anyway, so anyway, so she gets this whole story about calling rape on him, and he's like, what? I didn't do anything. He didn't do anything. But she's afraid that he will tell his, her husband, so that all didn't work out. So he gets all upset, and he throws her in the prison. And it came to pass, the master heard the words of his wife, which she spoke unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant unto me, that his wrath was kindled. Joseph's master took him and put him into the what? The prison. Now, would you, how many here would say that was a bad day? <laughs> you ever been arrested? How many have ever been arrested? I've been arrested, right? How many went to, how many went to, to jail? I went to jail. Was it me who did the crime? No, but I looked like the guy that did it. So they arrested me, and they took me downtown and booked me and put me in a prison. I'm like, I got, I'm like, can I tell you a secret? I didn't do anything. <laughs> but I fit the identity perfectly. Then they come back and apologize, but, you know, somebody record arrested for armed robbery. I didn't do anything. I just happened to look. I mean, can you imagine another guy good-looking as me out there? That's... <laughs> <laughs> I know, no way it could happen, right? Okay. All right, so he puts him in charge of the prison. Now, he's in that prison, and, the, and he recognizes that everything that he does is, like, perfect, so it gives him a little bit of responsibility, then gives him a little bit what? More responsibility. I mean, he's the prisoner, yes? Yep. This is a what? Prison? And he's a what? Prisoner? <laughs> but he knows, he, he learns everything about the prison, learns how everything works, takes charge of it as if he's in charge of the whole thing, and guess what happens? He's in charge. Again, right? You throw this man to the wolves, and he'll come back leading the pack. <laughs> and the keepers of the prison committed to Joseph's hands. Oh, all right. But the Lord was with Joseph. Why? Because Joseph didn't let go of who? God, and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Why? Because he's doing everything for God. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the what? Prisoners. All the prisoners. These are some bad guys. What is Joseph? Repeat after me, a prisoner. prisoner. And he's putting all the prisoners in a prison. That would sound like a bad, bad idea. Then, like the inmates running the prison? <laughs> What's wrong with this picture? And all the prisoners that were in the prison, and whatsoever they did there, he, Joseph, was the what? He knew everything. He understood everything worked. Everything was, he understood it. He knew. He mastered it. And the keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand. Because the Lord was with him, and that which he did, and the Lord made it to what? So who's running a prison? My prisoner. What? <laughs> well, he does a better job than I do. What if he lets all the prisoners out? He won't. Isn't that weird? Are you finding this? In, in, what am I teaching you? What am I teaching you? How to receive what? How to have God bless and protect you and provide for you, to prosper you. What am I teaching you? Godly stewardship precedes revelation. Got it? No stewardship, no proper care and concern, no blessings, no revelation. Godly stewardship precedes what? Revelation. If you're not working for God, you're not going to get it. This is all making sense. That was a big hint, by the way. Big hint. I'll try it again. Ready? All right. take, if you're going to take notes, take notes right there. Right? This one.
Ephesians 4.15. Are you all enjoying this? Yes. yes. All right. But speaking the truth in agape, did Joseph do that? Yes. Did he grow up? Yes. He got better, more capable, more skilled. Did he have bad times? Oh, yeah. But they all worked for his what? Benefit. And we know that all things work together, work together for good to them that agape God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Is this making sense? Yeah. And the crowd goes, Wild. no. <laughs> ah! All right. All right. Isn't that cool? All right. Next part. Here we go. Now we go from here to Pharaoh's throne room, right? Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. Why? Because his, when he heard that Joseph, he has this disturbing dream that he got. And he didn't understand it. It wasn't really clear. Ah, so Joseph, they sent for Joseph. He comes over. And they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in on the Pharaoh. Ta-da. He's there. Okay. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have dreamed a dream. And there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard of thee. What happens when people say, I have heard of you. I have heard of you. Wouldn't that be awesome? People say, I've heard of you. Wow. I said to Joseph. And yet you have more in you than Joseph does. What's up with that? Colloquial phrase. But thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, Yeah, dude, I got it down. Is that what he said? Lay it on me, I'll tell you what it means. Is that how it works? No. He says what? It's not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. I'm going to interpret your dreams because, you know, I'm so cool. Nope, nope, nope. Don't go there. Your power with God, your authority is going to disappear like that. You want to do it yourself? Fine. You're on your own. Godly, godly stewardship precedes revelation. Who are you working for? God. And Pharaoh said to his servants, can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? How many people who know you know that you have the Spirit of God? I told them. That's not the same thing. He didn't walk around going, I got the Spirit of God, and you don't. Nah, 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 nah. That's not how he did it. He walked with God. God showed him, and he told them, and he was like, whoa. When you walk by revelation, it opens people's eyes to how special you are. They just go, what? How did you know? It just blows them away. But you got to be with God for God to show you stuff. If, some, if you're thinking English and someone's speaking Spanish to you, you got to switch over to what? English. If you're going to hear from God, you got to switch over to God. Pharaoh said to Joseph, for as much as God has showed thee all this, there's none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house. How big is Pharaoh's house? And according to, unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. How well does he know Egypt? He knows it pretty good, doesn't he? Yeah. He'd been to party far. He'd been to prison. <laughs> he knows all the nasties, everything that's going on. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of what? Egypt. Who's in charge? Joseph. He's going to turn. Don't you hate it when people just turn everything over to you? So you got it. It's yours. Write your own check. <laughs> it's a rough life. As you're working for God, God's going to make sure that everybody prospers, that you are in charge of and you oversee, providing you do it God's way. 
And Pharaoh took, his, took off his finger. No, took off his... Ring. Oh, the ring from his finger. Yeah, a, here, you want this? <laughs> All right. He took the ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand. Now they're happily married. No, that's, that's talking about his, <laughs> a signet ring, right? Signet. The purpose that a person gives the ring, there used to be signet rings. The signet is a power of authority and power. And before, when the reason we got these rings and we hand out rings in marriage is because men used to hold authority and power over land. And what they would do was they give that authority to their wife as her beginning training to be his second, to be his azir. So he'd give her one. And she could either prove that she was worthless or that she was very worth worthy. Does that make sense? Today, women, you know, I don't know. You give a woman a bank account, you go, okay, what happened to the money? <laughs> I keep putting it in and somehow it keeps disappearing. <laughs> give me back my ring. All right, anyway. <laughs> This is this making sense, right? And Pharaoh took the ring off his hand and put it on Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen. Who wears fine linen? Pharaoh. And put a gold chain around his neck. Who's got gold around their neck? Pharaoh. Now who else does in Egypt? He do. And made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. Oh, he had to ride in Pharaoh's chariot. Yeah, his match today would be a limo, I guess, huh? Or his own jet plane. You understand how? What's your potential? What's your potential? When should you start? And he made him to ride in the second shirt, which he had, and they cried before him. <laughs> no, they're calling out loud, right? Bow the knee. And as soon as he walks in, everybody hits the ground. That's pretty cool. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh. That's pretty good. All right. <laughs> I am Joseph. <laughs> Pharaoh said, I am Pharaoh. And without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. You can't even do anything without Joseph's permission. That's pretty intense. Because having Joseph there was like having who? God. And you knew everything was going to be right if everybody did what he said to do. And you've got more than he does. You've got the whole enchilada and all he's got is the bean. Boy, that little bean's pretty powerful, isn't it? <laughs> All right. So here's the king. Here's the ruler. Who this guy? Azir. 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 Right. Let's try it again. This is the ruler. Who's this guy? Azir. All right. There's Christ. He's not here. But who is in charge? We are. And you are his what? Azir. There you go. Become one with God, not the world. Agape God, not the world. That's the true way of life. You are God's what? Best. Best. 